Good afternoon. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank Bev Evans, who's made my suitcase, which you'll see in a moment, which is up there. But the other thing is that this afternoon, I thought I would take you for a little bit of a travel and take your iPad as well, because... I would like, uh, if I may, to take you on a strange journey. Because, on a strange journey, because there's loads of iPads in the room. And there's this, I'm not going to make any further apologies for the fact that I'm talking iPod now, okay? Because it's about anything. We're very lucky, Sarah and I, to work with <coughs> little snotty ones all the way up to the big spotty ones. And on lots of different platforms. And I'm going to talk of lots of different things about, you know, iPads, iPods and iPatches and whatever. But in some ways... We're looking at different ways to motivate, to inspire children's thinking, whatever age, whatever ability. And I think the idea of starting static is always a good place, you know, bringing a world alive. But in some ways, the next step might be QuickTime VRs. Now, I've got uh, a QuickTime VR set into my slide here, look. So I'm looking around. This is actually New Zealand. Yeah, the landscape on this planet where they have almost every form of uh, terrain. Or how about this? B, the nutter who's hanging off that rock, look. Okay? Or, by looking around with my mouse, I can... Well, normally, let's go. Come on, technos, here we go. There we go, it's going to go. But I'm stretching technabilities here because I've put a of quick time VR into a, a slide. But one of the best places we've found to get these is panoramas.dk. Because look, you could sit um, Diana-like at the Taj Mahal here, look. Or, well, for me, the next step is, well, very often games. And then the idea of using games means that you can not only wander, but you can also stand still. <laughs> My name is inextricably linked with the Mist Games because they're beautiful, immersive landscapes that we can wander around in, but more importantly, stand still in. And that shot that you can see there is from Riven, which is where I started my explorations of computer games in schools. And it's now available for the iPad. So I'm amazed that I've got this presentation finished because I've spent hours playing on it for the last couple of weeks. And they are stunning worlds that we can wander, but as I said, more importantly, stand still in. Gorgeous landscapes. Let me show you a few of these little places. I mean, look, like human dung beetles. When you like to climb up one of those ladders and knock on the door, and you can. But it's the whole immersive, involving, a world that these places seem to inspire even the most reluctant writers, who seem to start scribbling with great surprise, not only for their teachers, but for themselves. Here's one of the schools we were in, sent us streams, oodles of writing based on the Riven game. But there are many others. One of my favorites, Return to Mysterious Island. Again, everything I'm talking about is either on a, uh, a, a PC, a Mac, or an iPad, or all of them, and in this case, you can get this in many different formats. Return to Mysterious Island. Again, for me, one beautiful aspect. It has a female lead character, and she's not, as I've said before, a pumped up pneumatic lady running around raging tombs, put it that way. The aspect of involvement is so important. For my delight recently, discovering the Epic Citadel app. And loads of people are nodding around the room because, you know, loads of people have picked it up and started to play with it. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And in many respects, because we can't broadcast yet, sadly, from an iPad very uh, <laughs> predictably, it's a lovely way to get children to sit 
and share and discuss. And I thought I'd take you in to the epic world and tell you a little story. Are you sitting comfortably, ladies and gentlemen? Then I'll begin. How it all started, he can't remember. How it progresses is up to you. How it ends is up to me. Every day, he would enter the city longing for crowds. Not for company, no, for crowds. In fact, his whole aim was to slip unnoticed, yet noticing through the throngs. All that is, except for one, one man who seemed to not only see him, but almost taunt him. He could travel where he wished, lifting anything he wanted. He wasn't particularly strong, oh no. You may have guessed it, he was in fact a pickpocket. A handkerchief here, a gold trinket there, a little diamond, anything he wanted. Well, almost anything. For that man who not only saw him, used to taunt him by taking out a gold watch, a tool of his trade, for he was in fact this town's hypnotist. And he would swing it from side to side, and that watch would tick a challenge to our friend. Take me. Our friend would head in, can you sense I'm making this up, so be patient with me now, all right? Would head into the town looking for his next catch. One day, whilst standing uh, outside this building, Taking a rest, he felt the softest whisper of a touch in his own back pocket. Reaching round as fast as he could, he held on to the slenderest, tenderest wrist he had ever encountered in his life. And he thought, I can't turn round, for she's bound to be a, dis a right munter. But he turns and ended up gazing into the most beautiful eyes he had ever seen. And he thought, how can I have missed out on this creation? And then he realized he had met his match in more ways than one. For it turned out, now just a minute, I'm, I'm not doing too badly. It turns out though that children can do it a lot better because uh, I'm just going to hand over to a couple of kids to tell that little bit again. Bit of green screen, I'll right? tell you the same. Once there lived a pickpocket who spent his life pickpocketing. Ah, a great treasure for my collection. This must be incredibly expensive, high-tech stuff, One eh? One day, a pickpocket met another pickpocket and they fell in love. Oh, oh come on, it went better in rehearsal. Oh, thank you, well done. Now that's gorgeous. They work together, pickpocketing from many pockets. But that's not how our story ends, because it didn't take long for him not to ask for her hand in marriage, he didn't need to, for she gave it readily. And they headed to the church, a glorious day. And it didn't take long for them to suddenly realize, my goodness me, if we were to join as one, and I'd have to be careful how I did this with children, surely that child would have the ultimate skill. Come the day, nine months later, my dears, when there they were, the four of them, our couple, the doctor, the midwife, a glorious day. But come the moment the child emerged onto the planet, <gasps> tragedy, the midwife, 
screamed and ran from the room, dropping her lantern, shattering into silver tears upon the floor. Oh, quite like that. And I'm going to keep that in. Shattering into silver tears upon the floor. And the doctor, his mouth hang, hung in horror, for the little child, his hand was clenched. Come on, at that point, I thought you were going to do a bit of, oh, oh, oh dear, look, their tragedy, the child that would be perhaps to take on their skills. Yeah. Would you like to meet the pickpocket, ladies and gentlemen? Would you? Well, ladies and gentlemen, give him a ripple because here he is. Now, you didn't know you were going to do this until about five minutes ago, so uh, I'm <coughs> sorry if I didn't. Um, how you doing? It must have been a terrible shock just now. Tell us a little bit about uh, life. Uh, yeah, I don't really like it up on the open stage like this. I normally, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, I wonder whether we have those magical wands. I thought we were going to have them here, but they are here somewhere. But uh, where are they? But never mind. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll hold close to you. I quite like being close to you. Excellent. Myself. Okay, I'll well then we should be able to hear. Um, but just don't take anything out of my back pocket. Right. Um, would you like to meet his wife? Actually, would you like to meet your wife? <laughs> well, I hope she's still here. Excellent. Yeah, well, know. ladies and gentlemen, would you like to meet the pickpocket's wife? <laughs> here she is. Give her a ripple. And another person who's up for a challenge. Well done, Dawn. Okay. All right. Tell us, you two. Tell us a little bit about how you first met, first of all, please. Well, it was terribly romantic. It was. Hand in a pocket moment. <laughs> it was exactly that. I turned around. It's in your minds. No, no, please. I, not in our world. No, I, I turned around and really... I mean, I was busy. Very busy. I'd, I'd got three purses. I'd got two watches. And I was on for a, you know, I wanted to end the day on a high. Excellent. And I thought, this slender wrist, this has got to be, there could be some good rings on this. Any questions for our pickpockets, ladies and gentlemen? Well, Sarah and I, in our travels, have found these things. They're gorgeous. Thinking dice. I'm not selling anything, don't worry. Thinkingdice.com. And they're great ways to get children to extend, or students of any age, their questioning. And they're, they're, they're really good. So, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chuck some out there. There you go, sir. Okay. So, let's see if there are any questions, please, for a couple of characters. Anything about how we met? Or uh, actually, tell us the about... The child. Tell us about the child. It must be it, feeling... It was devastating. I mean, there we are, professional pickpockets. It's how we make our life. And yet our firstborn comes out with a clenched fist. What are we to do? We travelled long and hard, and we, we've still not found someone that will, will tell us how we can unclench the fist. Do, do any of you know? Any ideas? We've tried everything. We've gone, gone down to the, the, the Holy River and tried, you know, all these sort of potions and Amazing. ideas, and nothing's worked. Gets nothing's you right there, anyone. doesn't it, folks? Like a bout of indigestion. A ripple, please, for my pickpockets. Thank you. Now, they didn't know what they were going to do. I just asked them, are you up for a challenge? Oh, you're doing very well, actually. You've nicked me microphone as well. Excellent. And it's, what are we going to do to solve this child's problem? Well, we've set that challenge to quite a few schools all over the place. Oh, thank you. Excellent, thanks. Uh, uh, oh, thank you, right. Okay. To write how that couple might solve the little child's problem. Sometimes analogue, but very often taking it that little bit further and going digital. Because there are so many opportunities, aren't there, nowadays? I like the idea that whatever form, it's what they say rather than what they use to say it. So look, I'm very grateful for uh, Susie Arnold working up at North and big one for me, Simon Widdison. And Simon is going to be one of two people presenting with me on Friday at BET where we're going to take this and go a bit further. But Simon Zanov on Twitter has been doing some incredible things from this challenge. Getting his children to write worlds of words about how this little child might solve the problem. There's another way. 
the old business of comic life, or, as we were talking about earlier on, doing it on the iPad now, the opportunity to tell a pictorial story, as it were. The idea of bringing a world of, in this case, venturing through how do they, how are they going to solve this child's problem? Taking him up the hill to the, the sage, or in across the moors to the witch in the tent, and nothing, nothing works. And Porchester, they've been doing some incredible things, using lots of different media, media. Here's a little hint, look, a couple of the things they've been doing. The idea, again, of using lots of different resources, applications, programs, whatever, and combining them, getting children to think laterally and problem solve how they can get a story across. So in this case, using iMovie just to make, well, in this case, look, our Star Wars like Star. And the Citadel worlds come alive. And here, even more alive, using Zooburst to make a 3D pop up book. And you can explore that. And what we've been discovering is turning it around is just the beginning. Because you can also use the old idea of AR, augmented reality. You can pick, print yourself out a little, you know, one of them magic shapes. And hold it up, look, there's Simon remotely turning the pages. Watch, just move your hand. And here it goes, turn the page. Zoo burst, beautiful. But another one for me, the idea of using, well, things like to create a super story. They've been building little animated tales of how this couple might solve the child's problem. Now, iPads, iPads, as we've been hearing a lot over the last uh, few hours, the whole like, business of sucking down information, it's got to go beyond that, hasn't it? It's got to be used to actually create something new. And we've been very lucky to explore with schools all over the place, lots of different apps to create, to generate, not only information, but artwork in this case. So brushes. Now, the idea of this one is that you can take an existing picture, in this case, one of the screenshots from Citadel, and then work with it. So it's almost like tracing. You know, that used to be called cheating. It's inspiration, isn't it? So you sketch the outline, tracing every little brick, if you feel that detail, and then take the background out, color in your creation, and what's lovely, and uh, Simon only discovered this for me the other day when he said, look, I've managed to video it because Brushes actually exports a little film of how you created your picture. And you can use that to inspire a bit more storytelling, a bit more thought, perhaps, of a location. Here's another one. The idea, as Tony was saying, about taking colour out of an image. What can that do? It can bring a different atmosphere. So in this case, colour splash, look, you can isolate. Just one little pic remains in colour, the rest of it in black and white, creating a different sense of tension. Here's a gorgeous one. Physios, sculptor. Look, you can actually take, it could be a cube of wood, it could be a block of metal, and you can actually sculpt. So what they've been doing is making boxes so that the pickpockets can carry the, oh, whatever it is, you know, the potion from one place to the other. Another gorgeous little bit for me, the whole uh, business of creating, of generating, when you've made something, get people to actually comment on it, talk about it, discuss it, peer review. There's another making one, look, iPottery, Pottery HD, this is free apps I'm talking about. Most of these things are free. Look at this, at speed here, here's somebody making a pot. One of these children making a beautiful creation. And the idea with this is that once you've made it, you can sell it and it's all within your iPad so there's no need to worry about who won't buy it or who will buy it. But when you've sold it you can buy new resources like colours or, or patterns. And they've been making containers to go with 
the couple on their journey. And again, peer reviewing all the outcomes. Love it. Uh, pixels. We know pixels and the fact that they're surrounded in black. But do you know what a 3D pixel is called? Nobody? It's called a voxel. I didn't know that until the other day. A voxel. When I discovered this app, voxel is a 3D sculpty thing. Now, the examples that we're here, you know, using are quite sort of simplistic, aren't they? But you can actually go incredibly detailed. Go try it because you can move your creation around. Again, making containers and boxes. And one other little thing, when we were working up in a school in, in Newcastle, when we were up with uh, Mr. Bunce there, was the idea of how are they going to transport from down by the river all the, uh, you know, so look, geared means that children are thinking laterally as to how to actually combine different gears and solve and create, yeah, perhaps in this case machinery, but again the analogue and digital making it for real. Music. Creating things on a, excuse me, I'm going to head back there. Creating things on an iPad. There's tons of, and I'm going to put links to these up on the blog later on, and loads of them. Now, there are, I mean, in iPads, you know, there are some sort of teething problems. The opportunity to get certain things off it, for example, can be very difficult. And you have to think laterally. And there are many ways to do it. I mean, Dropbox, I don't know how many of you use Dropbox. Yeah, great, show of hands, fantastic, because Dropbox it means you can share files, not just from one computer to another, but also from an iPad or an iPhone. But also, bump, I think that's a bit of magic. Knock your two phones or your iPads together and you've shared the information. But you can actually take it further, and I'm hoping that a few people might take the nudge on this, because I set somebody else a challenge. Are you here, Mr. Mitchell? Deputy Mitchell, Dave, because I set Dave a challenge coming down on the train to write me a 30-second piece of music and get it to my computer. And we're going to do it because using Music Studio, fingers crossed this is going to work, fingers crossed, I just clicked into um, Dave's iPad. Is it switched on, Dave? Okay, we seem to be having a slight uh, techno problem here, Dave. Um, uh, can you read out the... Come up here, will you, boy? Can you um, tell me the... Uh, good lad, well done. Oh, gosh, Mrs. Doubtfire's back. Um, actually, Dave, I'm going to get you to do this because I might go uh, spectacularly off the stage. Dave's just typing in the IP address of his laptop. No, not his laptop, his iPad. OK, and uh, I haven't heard this, but what I've done is I've put a link to the file he's going to put onto my laptop and in the next slide hopefully it will trigger it off so which one is it uh, wav. tim new wav now how did you do this then uh, dave on the train tell me a little bit about what you uh, were yeah the bet challenge? Uh, between rugby and cr well crew and rugby uh, a boring part of the journey thank you for making it more interesting um it was a uh, Music Studio Lite, it's a, uh, you can just do as many tracks as you like, up to 130 odd tracks, I think. So I just did one track at a time. Um, I'm not particularly musical, but That's very why I set you the challenge, in yes. fact, because I asked him, first of all, are you a music specialist? He said, no. So I thought, right, great, this is good. And um, let's see, okay? A ripple, please, from my glamorous musician. Thank you. So on the next slide, it's gonna trigger, hopefully, Dave's music. Woo! So that's referring to the file I downloaded onto my desktop. Gorgeous stuff. Thank you, Dave. Brilliant. Now, here's another little app that we've been using in different places. Again, the examples I'm going to show you look quite, uh, you know, from the lit lease, but this is usable in any age. Puppet Pals. It means that a bit like, you know, when you have one of those box theatres, the cardboard box with the characters on sticks. Well, you don't see the sticks. You can move your characters around and get them to perform plays. I love that music, Dave. Thank you. Brilliant. One of my other favourites ones, Grannymator. 
just for the sheer fun of it. Granimator, dears, yes. Um, Granimator is the opportunity to build, and it's sound-based, and I've taken the sounds off in this case, but you just, you know, bloop, 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 and it's beautiful. Especially useful, I think, a bit like Bev Evans was talking about at the Teach Meet last night, using it with children with special needs, perhaps. Here's a gorgeous one, I do, or I duff, as we say. The idea that you can gain, look, a bit like the pottery, you can make a 3D character at great speed, at great pace. And again, there's a free version of that. I don't think we should expect everything to be free, do you? Getting children, students, into the experience. But we can go even further than just cutting it out. Now, Kevin, Kevin McLaughlin, Kevin on Twitter. Kevin is another person who's going on Friday going to be presenting with me at BET and we're going to extend all the things we've done here. Kevin's done a little bit, which I think is gorgeous, using green screen. Now, you don't need fancy high-level techno stuff because Kevin has been recording his green screen, a bit like Tony was saying, using an iPhone. I love this. It's going to demystify the whole process of green screen. screen using iMovie 11. First of all, you must make sure that you have got the advanced tools checkmarked. Once you've done that, you choose a picture that you want to use as the backdrop of your green screen. In this case, I'll just choose this photograph. Most photographs will be put up, uh, all photographs you put in will be only four seconds. So you want to change your clip to whatever length you want the backdrop to be. In this case, for the example, I'll do 10 seconds. And once that's set in place, choose your green screened video that you've already imported. Choose roughly the same length of time as you've put in for the backdrop. You recognize Drag these it two. across the screen and get it as close to the beginning of the photo as you can. Drop it in place and select green screen. If you film on blue screen, choose blue screen instead. Select that. And there you go. That's it. Green screen demystified. Filmed in a busy classroom. No easy, isn't it? Yeah, easy, isn't it? No studio set up there. But the idea of using lots of different resources. Here's a gorgeous little thing that I'm sure many of you know, VoiceThread. And uh, Kevin actually was the first person I uh, discovered VoiceThread through because he'd been using Mist with his class in Gran Canaria. I've just got a job at the Sword and Shield. I'm walking on the cobbled streets. I feel... Sp this is my favourite. I walk, I walk down the alley by the pub. The smell of rotting food. The street is so cobbled, I nearly fall over. I smell a whiff of wine. I stared over my shoulder. Falls, there falls water. I looked up at tons of filthy washing. Gorgeous. Now, again, whoop, excuse me. Again, the idea of, uh, in that case, recording maybe comments, stories, non linear. Again, so many simple things now. I say simple things because children take to these far more readily than we do sometimes. But using iMovie and GarageBand, we've been spending some time, this was um, Parkland School. Um, we made a soundtrack to a roller coaster ride. Now, look at, listen to this. Now, we expect high quality image and sound. This is a group of children in the lunchtime recording, well, I think, quite an atmospheric little bit. And on a different layer on Garage Band, we had the screaming horde going on this roller coaster from, in this case, Mr. Three. And then... Mind blowing, stomach churning, heart something, heart something, nothing, heart something. It was making me feel a bit sick. So um, the idea, again, I said, sometimes we get paranoid that we're not going to know how to use something. And I think if we don't know, we've got to be honest and ask because there are many times when children do know I think sometimes if we do know how to do it it's better to pretend we don't because that's when some of the best learning can take place isn't it 
Time. I wish I had more time, but time plays an important part in the end of our story. Because time was running out. They'd been everywhere. And then they remembered the man, the hypnotist with the watch. And they thought, if we could just get that watch, we could sell it and make enough money to carry on with our travels to solve our child's dilemma. So they headed back into the citadel and they sought the hypnotist and they found him at the pub. And he said, stop. Taking my watch will be a short-term solution to your problem. Let me try my skin. So they went with him down into his tent and the little child's eyes, instead of closing, opened. And so did its hand. And there, inside, was the midwife's gold wedding ring. <laughs> yeah! Love it. Thank you. You weren't guessing that, were you? <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Tim. I'm saying, do, you have any, do we want any questions? But do you want to take any questions? I'd love to, if anybody's up for it. Alternatively, okay. we can all go home. There's... Well, we have some time. So does anybody have any questions for Tim in that wonderful presentation? I'm scanning around here. A complete 360. Excellent. Hey, hey we've got one. Hold it, hold it, Tim. Hold on. Oh, we've got one there here. There is one. Left-hand side, right in the middle. Can we just wait for the mic so we get... Over the next um, week, we're, we're doing things for v various different places all around London, um, finishing on Friday with a presentation at BET where we're getting 115 in the Apex Room. Alternatively, go and see Dave's one about blogging, because that will be even better. Mic's on, please. Is it on? Yeah, it's on. Yeah, um, yeah j just two questions, really. One, um, all the apps that you've shown us um, today, is on your website, is that right? It will be, give me a chance. The Tim Rylands one, right. And um, also the apps from, uh, from the guy before. From Tony, yes, Tony's our... From Tony, um, where will they be? Because obviously there's quite a lot that you've shown us there today. So I just um, wondered where they're all going to be. The, the address that Tony mentioned, learning in hand forward slash MMM, but on mine is timrylands.com. TimRylands.com forward slash blog. Great, thank you. I have nothing to sell. <laughs>